from coast to coast, live via satellite, it's time to praise the Lord. covers the major Christian events in America and across the world, reaching over 500 million souls with the good news of new life in Jesus Christ. Now, from Phoenix, Arizona, we invite you to be part of the world's largest prayer gathering. Praise the Lord are Laverne and Edith Tripp with sons Robbie and Terry, Dr. Donald Whitaker, Buck and Donnie Rambo, Betty Jean Robinson, and ready to take your call, some of the most beautiful prayer partners in the world. Now your host, president and founders of the Trinity Broadcasting Network, Paul and Welcome, welcome, everybody, everybody, everybody from coast to coast. We're in the beautiful Valley of the Sun, Phoenix, Arizona, and it's great to have you all with us as we begin another great week of revival. Oh, my, don't you like the sound of that word? I just believe that we ought to tell the Lord tonight what we believe him for. I, we asked the Lord, what, for 10,000 souls two weeks ago, the Lord Gave us at least that and more, and I think we ought to up it just a little bit, well, don't you? absolutely. And <laughs> let's Amen. go for the whole wide world. <laughs> oh, all right, all right. From Phoenix. Why not? Amen. Why not? <laughs> you know, this is a very special day today. Um, I guess we call it President's Day now, don't we? Originally, our celebration for um, the birth of the father of our nation, George Washington. But uh, we didn't uh, work it into the announcement tonight, but we're going to have a very special message from our president, uh, Mr. Ronald Reagan, tonight on the program, an address that he gave a few days ago at the National Association of Religious Broadcasters in Washington, D.C. And I'll tell you, this man, well, you just listen for yourself. He has had a touch of God upon his life, and I am so pleased at the way he is standing up for the word, uh, for returning prayer to our public schools, for uh, taking uh, this abortion problem away from us, and just all kinds of things. You will hear a very special message from him tonight. You know what? Let's, uh, let's just dash over for a real quick second and uh, say howdy to some of our wonderful folks here in Phoenix, Arizona. Can you all follow me over? Um, let's just say hi. In fact, give yourselves a big hand over here tonight, would you? We are excited to be here with you, and this is my favorite place in the whole wide world. Come on in here, honey. Dan always loves the children, and my, we've got a great gang here tonight. You, you got to do my favorite thing, throw a, a Phoenix love wave all the way to New York right now. Would you do it? We get, you get to see us over in California all the time. Now we get to see you and to share Christian love across America to our other sister stations, wherever they may be. And then a little question I always love to ask, and I don't know if you saw this a moment ago, honey, but I love to ask this question whenever I get into a group of new partners like this. How many of you in this little group here, we've got maybe 150, something like that, either for the very first time or from a back sudden condition came back to Jesus as your Savior through Christian television? Hold them up real high. Look at that. I counted a little while ago, about 24, I believe, that uh, I think we ought to thank the Lord Jesus for that tonight. Amen. And I always love to ask a little question. Is Christian television worth it? It is worth it. It's worth it. We love you all so much. And I just love to stand here in the middle of these good folks. You know, after the program tonight, will you all stay with me for about an extra 15 minutes, and we'll do a behind-the-scenes program. 
right here at this very spot a, a little bit later, okay? Do you have any other little words you want to share before we have prayer with her? You know, I think one of the most exciting things in the whole wide world is to know that this is the year of the Bible. Yeah. I've said it over and over. I don't know what I would do without my Bible. I don't know what we would have done, well, all of my life. 25 tw and a half years of marriage, we've clung to this word so many times. But the last 10 years in the ministry of Trinity, we have, when the whole wide world would have said, kids, give up and leave it alone. You can't make it. We would get a word from the Lord oh, and man. hang on. Oh, man. When some of the things that we went through with family members and people would have said, oh, just forget it and go on. We'd run to the word and the Lord would give us a word and we'd hang on to it. Honey, just real quick, you have to give that very special word. Where when everything was falling apart at Trinity, everything was going wrong and nothing was going right. And the Lord gave you a word in Chicago, Illinois, when you were there helping him get Channel 38 on the air. Do you remember that? Yes, Psalm 55. Re what was it? It says... He shall deliver my soul in peace from the battle that was against me, for there were many with me. <laughs> Isn't that incredible? <laughs> I mean, can you hang on to this word when the Lord gives you something like that? And over and over and over the other night, Paul was reading his Bible. And he said, you know, because Paul has a Bible that he marks. Everything in that happens, it's like his little diary. And he was reading, and then he said, you know, honey, I had forgotten, thank God, the battle that we had gone through to get Channel 21. Mm -hmm. The many, many battles that we went through, but God won. And what was it that kept us going? His Word. Right. Do you remember the day that we didn't even know whether or not to come over here about eight years ago to even begin thinking about Channel 21 in Phoenix? The Lord gave us a word through a brother named Jim Spillman. He came down and yeah. he said, I woke up, I got out of bed. He said, I put on my pajamas and I came down here to a live Sorry. television program. Yeah, took his pajamas off. He came <laughs> up here. <laughs> he took his pajamas and put his clothes on. That was it, yes. That's it, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, he could have put on a house coat. Back no. then, nobody was watching anyway. It's all right. No, <laughs> but he, he came down and he said that the Lord had told him to open the word. And it said tomorrow, go about noon to the desert area. Yes. And so he said it was in the word. He, showed, he had no idea what it was, but we hung on to that. The next day about noon, we got on a plane, came to the desert area, oh, yeah. and that was the well, beginning. I was Chairman. scheduled to come that on next the, day on the noon flight yeah. from John Wayne Airport over there. And uh, so that was just a confirmation. Yes, the word, the word is, life. Is, is life. Of course it is, and it is alive. Yeah. And the thing I hope we can get across to everyone tonight is that no matter what your problem is, no matter what you're going through, no matter how high the mountain is, no matter how difficult it is, no matter how much your friends say give up, just like they did to Job, just hang on to that word because it works, people. It really works. It'll never fail you. Uh, you know, I'll never forget another, as long as we're giving a few little testimonies here. Somebody got a King James Version. Uh, would you look up uh, Jeremiah 39? The very last, next to the last verse, just uh, Psalms, Proverbs, uh, Jeremiah, there it is, Jeremiah 33. I will be able to really tell you all about this in just a few days. Here it is. But Channel 40 has just come through a very, very important five-year struggle. We aren't able yet to tell you all about this and we have not been able to share it with you publicly on the air because it just wasn't proper to do so because it was in litigation but the license of channel 40 over in Santa Ana California while well, it's being moved from Fontana to Santa Ana and and uh, we just we just were in very very dire straits for about five years and someday I'll tell you the whole story when it's proper for me to do so but one day when I was just absolutely at the point of despair you were in Washington. no I was in my office in in Tustin California a very important call had just come from Washington 
a very serious call. And people, I, I share this with you just to let you know, no matter how seemingly bad the news is, no matter how impossible the situation seems to be, if you'll run to this word, you'll, you'll be amazed how God will speak to you from, from this word. Uh, now, you know, I don't always recommend that you just grab the Bible and kind of take a, you know, let it drop open and just whatever your eye falls upon, that's the, you know, the Lord's special word to you that day. He does do that, of course. He does do that. Um, the classic story, I guess, that we all laugh about is that uh, a guy did this one time and uh, he opened up and it said, and Judas went and hanged himself upon a tree and he said, oh, I don't want that. So he opened up to another place in the Bible and says, go and do that likewise. You know, so it doesn't always work. You know, you, you have to be very careful and be sure that you're in the spirit when you when you do this, but God often will take a word out of this word. I know Miss Lillian Trasher that I loved and revered so, the mother of the Nile, uh, she's told many interesting story how, how, stories how God has spoken to her directly out of this word. Well, I was absolutely at my wit's end. I was ready to just absolutely throw in the towel and quit. Have you ever been? Don't y'all look so holy at me now. You, you've been there too. And um, there was a, a group that, uh, well, we were having some real problems with, and you'll hear about it. But this, as God is my witness, this is the very verse that the Lord directed me to on that day. Verse 17, verse 39, chapter 39, verse 17. But I will deliver thee in that day, saith the Lord, and thou shalt not be given into the hands of the men of whom thou art afraid. For I will surely deliver thee, and thou shalt not fall by the sword, but thy life shall be for a prey unto thee, because thou hast put thy trust in me, saith the Lord. God couldn't have spoken to me any clearer that day if he'd have just opened heaven and thundered it right out of the clouds to me. It answered the question that I had. It settled the whole situation. I took new strength from that. I literally didn't quit that day because of that word that the Lord gave to me there in that hour of need. And he'll do the same for you. That's all we're saying this for is so that you'll take courage today, so that you'll be encouraged and lifted and take heart. God is with us. This is the year of the Bible. Are you all reading your Bibles? Are you all reading them? Don't just look at them now. Get them off the shelf and read them. Amen. You know what? Let's have Buck and Dottie Rambo come and sing a song for us right now, and then we'll all gather over here. I want Doc Whitaker and Laverne and Edith and the boys and Buck and Dottie to join us. We'll have a great prayer meeting. Let's just ask the Holy Spirit to come now and just fill this little TV studio with a glory and with the presence of God. Some of you that are suffering in your bodies tonight, you can be healed in this TV studio tonight if you'll reach out and touch Jesus. That son or daughter you're praying for, mm, we're going to reach out through the wings of prayer tonight, and we're going to touch them by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. Phoenix is going to be different because of this week that we've shared the love of God together. It's going to be a better city. There's going to be more souls saved. There's going to be less suffering. There's going to be more light. It's going to be great because we're going to have a whole week together here in Phoenix, Arizona. You know, honey, I really feel strongly tonight that there are people here that have children that really need to get back to Jesus. Am I right? How many of you have a loved one that you're really praying for, mm -hmm. especially a child, mm -hmm. that you really want to see find Jesus tonight? That's really been on my heart all day. Mm -hmm. And I just know tonight something is going to be said. The Lord's going to give you a word. The Lord's going to send a laborer into the harvest. We're going to ask tonight for the salvation of our loved ones. And once we ask, that sets God in motion to do something about it. Honey? So the minute we ask, something will begin happening. Do you know how? I'm going to give you a word right now. The Holy Spirit quickens this to me this moment. Do you want to know how to ha ensure that your son or your daughter or your loved one is saved? The Bible, there's a, little, there's a little 
principle in here, and we've talked about it an awful lot on telethons when we were relating to finances, and of course it works in that area too. But when the Bible says, give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, it's not just talking about money. It's talking about whatever you need, whatever your need is. If you need your son or daughter saved, you go win someone else's son or daughter to Jesus and say, God, I'm giving this witness and I'm going to see that some other mother's son or daughter is won into the kingdom. And then I'm going to believe you that you'll send a laborer into the harvest field to win my son or daughter. Now that works. It really does. Whatever you need, you give away what you need. That's just the way God's law works. You see, we say, as John Appenzini says, so cute, you know, get all you can, let's see, can all you get, and then sit on the can. I mean, that's, that's the world's way. That's the world's way of doing it. But God says, give away, give away. If you need something, you give it away. See, our way is actually backwards from God's way. He's the right way, you see. So whatever you need from the Lord tonight, if you are low in finances, give something to someone else that's in need. Give to, you know, ask the Lord to show you who to give to. Maybe it's your church. Maybe it's a missionary. Maybe it's someone in this room that you ought to give. You know, maybe it's someone you'll meet on the way home tonight. I don't know. But the Holy Spirit will show you what to give and to whom it should be given. Well, that's just a little thought, a little word, and we're going to pray together and agree on this and many other things in just a few moments. But here to get us underway musically, I know you love them, love them, love them, love them as I do. I told, were you watching the other night when Bill Gaither was on, Dottie? You missed Bill Gaither. We talked about, your ears should have burned a little bit. We were talking about you. Oh, you were singing. Well, that's okay then. You can, you're forgiven. Um, but I declare, if it wasn't for Bill Gaither and... Dottie Rambo Betty Jean. and Laverne. Betty Jean and Laverne, <laughs> we just wouldn't have very much Christian music around, I'll tell you, we really wouldn't. But uh, we had a great night the other night with Bill Gaither, and he sang some of those wonderful songs that we've loved so much. Let's just praise the Lord, and, and um, the church triumphant is alive and well, and the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows, and other great songs. Well... Dottie Rambo is here tonight, and one of the great, powerful oomph songs that she and Buck sing are, is called Sons of Thunder and the Daughters of the Light. Let's tell the Rambos it's good to have them in Phoenix, Arizona, as they sing for us. Call in your prayer requests right now. For the battle We have never dropped the flag Or called retreat Like the sound of many waters We keep marching through the night We're the mighty sons of thunder And the daughters of the Over the face of the sun Who could dim that golden ray of light What power on this earth could hush The shouting marching throne Of the mighty sons of thunder And the daughters of the sleep 
Or pause to rest till victory's in our hand. We'll brave the night and we'll rise to fight again. Buck and Dottie. Buck and Dottie, just come on over here and stand by Jan, and we're going to agree together in prayer. In fact, join hands right now in this little studio audience there at home. We're going to believe God for the greatest week Phoenix has ever had. And from this Channel 21 via the Holy Beamer, we're going to touch our whole nation with the glory of the presence and power of Jesus Christ. Oh, people, I feel a tide rising in my soul tonight. I believe God's going to do miracles tonight in this TV studio. You know, God's shown me. I don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but I know before Jesus comes, we're going to see, in the world's estimation, unbelievable miracles on live television. I know we're going to see it. We're going to see the maimed. There's a scripture where it talks about Jesus healed those that were brought to him that were maimed, M-A-I-M-E-D. You know how the Living Bible reads? Those who had missing arms and legs were restored completely, perfectly. I literally believe that we're going to see the dead raised to life again on live TV. That the world may know he's real, he's alive. I know we're going to see it may happen tonight or maybe this week in Phoenix, Arizona. Glory to God. Anybody dead in spirit that needs to be raised tonight? He'll do that too. Yes, he will. And together we're going to see the power and the presence and the glory of God. Let me just say hi to Buck and Dottie. How you Bless doing? you, brother. Doing great. Doing great. Fantastic. Dottie, where y'all been? What you been up to? Well, where have we North, been? <laughs> North County Christian Center. Sunday morning and I Sunday night we were there. Yes. Had a great time. It was marvelous. The Lord's really working there. Wonderful. Dottie and John are special people. We got to kind of get to know them better. Uh, sweet little sister Jan, her husband, had lunch with them, and we just and we ate at the Lord's table Sunday morning and Sunday night. It was great. The Lord's been good. We've been doing a lot of recording, releasing new records, writing a lot, and releasing new musicals. We've been busy. Is the rose finished yet? <laughs> <laughs> I was that, waiting. That's on the that. thorn in the flesh, brother. <laughs> oh, what a line, Buck. <laughs> It's You're still working it's, on it. Uh, really, I, you know, Paul, that song is so special to me till I hate to let go until the melody is just right. But I'm pretty sure I do have it right where I want it now. Yes, tell us about that. Her tell it. Well, She's up for a good Say it so we can hear it on this microphone. Well, Dottie and Reba Rambo are both up for Grammy Awards. <laughs> Isn't that great? Yeah. You know, when the whole wide world recognizes Christian music as the greatest, we are so thrilled for both of them. And they aren't against each other. That's mother and daughter, and they're in two different categories. I'd never make it if I was up against Reba, thank <laughs> God. <laughs> But, but I am excited. This Wednesday? Yeah, this, this Wednesday um, That's we, going to be telecast nationally, isn't yes, it? Yes, uh, yes, you'll yes. be there, of course. We'll be there. and but Christians can't watch because they've got to be watching this program. There you go. <laughs> Sneak a little look over just when Dottie and Reba are on, okay? Uh, are you, uh, is there a particular song that is uh, being placed in 
what competition or what? These are for albums, like my album, the solo new solo oh, album, wow. making my own place in, in the sunshine. And Rebus is Lady Live in a different category. And then it's exciting too. Barbara Mandrell's new gospel album is up in another category, which I'm singing on the album with her, and Andre's on the album with her, and several B. J. Thomas. So that's up for a Grammy. So we may all just be carrying them home for the Lord. Oh, if it's mm -hmm. the Lord's will, it'd be great. Sounds to me like Christian music's just taken over, doesn't it? Well, of course, you know. Hey, hey. It's supposed to. When did we ever not win all the Grammys? That's what I want to know. <laughs> the question is, why did we not always win the Grammys? Yeah. You, you, the Lord was just talking to me today in the hotel, uh, Paul. The world's really getting nervous because they sense a different attitude about the church. See, even the, the expressions of the saints, because something big's about to happen. See, they're, they're scared to death. They're about to lose us. See, the church is about to go up. See, and they're giving us a lot of attention we never got before. But yeah. I have to say this. We, some of our best friends is in secular music, and they love the Lord, and they sing other styles of music with good lyrics, and they treat us with such respect. And, and I want to thank people that are associated with the Grammy uh, folks and that, you know, respect gospel music. Isn't that great? Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's wonderful. Praise Amen. the Lord. The bottom line is we are winning. Amen. The church is winning. The world is taking notes. We're going to have the number one TV network, too. Amen. Doesn't the Bible say we are to be the head and not the tail? Man, we've just kind of... I, oh, I'm, if I'm not careful, I'll get to, you get me stirred up, but that old brother that wrote songs like Hold the Fort and If I Can Just Make It In, you know, they're going to be embarrassed. No, Laverne didn't write that. What, what are you talking about? <laughs> they're going to be embarrassed in heaven. It's the church triumphant is alive and well. Oh, glory. Well, I better watch it or I... Hello, Dr. Whitaker. <laughs> Hello, Paul. How you doing? Doing fine. Did somebody touch your funny bone there? Then? <laughs> Jan's good at Jan, that. Jan, Jan did, yes. You had a good time down in Miami, I hear. I had a lovely time. Lovely time. And Jan, I'm not fat. <laughs> <laughs> Jan likes to needle dock a little bit because, of course, he's always given us good advice, and rightly so, on our diets and eating habits and... But I knew, you know, I did see myself on TV the first time this evening, you know, riding over here with Laverne. I look like a bear. <laughs> I'm going on a diet. I didn't have no neck. I never had seen myself. You know? I want to cancel well, the program. <laughs> don't panic. Uh, TV kind of does that to you. You know, it makes you a little older and a little fatter. So, uh, yes, I, I, not a little, man. I mean bad. <laughs> <laughs> well, physician, heal thyself. Right. Okay. <laughs> Betty Jean, how are you tonight? God it's love fine, you. fine, Paul. Thank How's you. How's Franklin, Tennessee? Just great. Still on the map? Yes, still on the map. All right. You going to sing us a little song tonight? Yes. We'll sing some new songs from my album. And is it okay to tell a little secret about new TV program? Mm hmm Betty Jean, Miss Betty Jean Robinson, is going to do a whole new Christian television program for the Trinity Broadcasting Network. And have you started production yet? Or? We start in March. In March. Mm -hmm. Great. Have you named it yet? Maybe up on Melody Mountain. Oh, great. Couldn't hardly beat that. If you've never been to Betty Jean, Betty Jean Robinson's home, it's called Melody Mountain. Mm -hmm. Betty Jean had Jan and me and some of the folks from TBN one time we got to go to the Grand Ole Opry, remember, and got to talk about satellite to all the folks there. And she had us out for a southern... Oh, Dr. Whitaker, I'm, <laughs> my conscience still hurts me. Fried okra, black-eyed peas, chicken, cornbread. Oh, dear, dear. Oh, quit it, quit it, quit it. <laughs> Pork chops, everything. Yeah, go away from me. Go away from me. I still remember that day. <laughs> Up on Melody Mountain. That would be a great title. And we, uh, you going to invite me back someday for another one? Oh, yes. Anytime. <laughs> we want you and Jan to come. We want everybody to come. Oh, it's so beautiful out there. In the, is that called the, uh, that's not the Smoky Mountains area, is it? No, um, that's uh, Smoky Mountains is in East Tennessee. East Tennessee. Yeah, I guess those mountains there are called Cumberland Mountains, aren't they, Dottie? Mm -hmm. so, uh, but I'm from up in the Appalachian Mountains. Mm -hmm. up, uh, 
Don's laughing over here. <laughs> What's he laughing at? Well, he wants to tell the story, but he's not going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> when you get on, Doc, you can tell us what it's all about. Well, we'll be praying for you, Betty Jean, Thank if the Lord will just make you Thank program you. the very best on TBN. You know, Paul, I was you were talking about uh, the president uh, making 1983 the year of the Bible, and um, I've really been feeling in my heart that God has been drawing me back to his word, and what you said a while ago is truly the truth. And I've, I've really felt for the last two months I have just really been into God's Word. And, and uh, that is the answer. It's all of God's children to look into His Holy Word and live by it. That's it. Because it is like uh, James Robinson. I was listening to him last night, and it was so fantastic. He said there is a tru the truth, but he said the only truth is God's truth and God's mm -hmm. Word. And, of course, you all were there, and I love that, what he said, all the things he said. Praise God. Well, we're going to have a great night tonight, and then we look forward to Melody Mountain coming real soon. How's the trip, family? Who's the spokesman tonight? Edith. E e what? What? Edith. No. I was trying to get her to talk, but she won't do it. Let's tell the trip family hello tonight, and welcome to Praise the Lord. You look mighty pretty tonight, yeah? You are ready for color TV tonight. Thank you, Paul. We're glad to be back in Phoenix. You just drove in? What? You've been over? Well, we had service last night. Um, at Brother Carroll's church in Whittier. Whittier. Yeah, I forget where I was. And we left after that and we came over. Good to have you all here tonight. Going to do a little preaching in here. a minute. I'm glad I'm here too because for the first time I've been included in with Bill Gaither and Dottie Rambo <laughs> and Betty Jean Robinson. If I hadn't have been here, I wouldn't have been included in that group. So I'm glad I'm here. <laughs> No, I think we mentioned you the other night anyhow, even though you weren't there. So well, I'll tell you, I'm glad to be here. And I, am, I really believe it's going to be a great week. Uh, God is doing a great, it, it is harvest time. Yes. And I am so thankful that we are a part of TBN, the TBN family, because it is just, our ministry is just totally exploding. And uh, we promised the Lord about a year ago that we'd give 10% of our record sales to TBN. I know. And we've been doing it, and, and I had to fly back to South Carolina last week just to take care of it because not only is the records doing good, but now we've started on distribution company, on record company. The stores and distributors are ordering from us. I mean, we've just surpassed all the companies and everything, and God's doing it, and he's doing it because it's going towards winning the gospel. Lord, keep blessing him. Keep doing it. Yes. Keep doing it. And the bottom line to it all is souls. Yes, souls. Souls. Yesterday morning, 82 people were saved at Palmview Assembly of God. Last night, 62 people were saved. And tonight, there are going to be thousands saved tonight. Amen. There are going to be thousands Amen. saved tonight through this tool of evangelism. Let's just agree on that right now. Could we just kneel around the little coffee table here? Keep, take somebody by the hand there, right here in the studio audience, there at home. Let's agree together that the glory of God will just fill this TV studio. We're not here to produce a TV show or a program of any kind. We want the Holy Spirit to do the perfect will of God in this studio tonight, and then we want these TV cameras just to look in on that. And let this message go from New York to Juneau, Alaska, to Honolulu, Hawaii. Glory to God. Laverne, lead us in prayer as we ask the Lord to just begin the work this week in Phoenix. Amen. Father. In the precious name of Jesus, we come to you again on behalf of this particular night. We first of all thank you and praise you that you've delivered us from the power of sin. You've delivered us from the condemnation. You've delivered us from the guilt. And you have written our name in the book of life. And Lord, it's not through our goodness that that was accomplished. It was through your grace and your mercy. And we praise you for that. We thank you for that cleansing stream, the precious blood of Jesus. And your word that continues to cleanse us from our sins. Lord, we just lift up tonight. We just praise you that we have this opportunity to lift up the name of Jesus. I ask you, Lord, to anoint everyone in a special way. We claim that anointing of the Holy Spirit upon every song, upon every word that's spoken. Spirit of God, we now ask you to move by Amen. your power and by your might the across the face of, of this earth and cause those that need to hear the oh, message that you've given us for this night to tune in even now and begin to deal with their hearts and may they realize that there is something that lasts forever. And Lord, we thank you tonight for the results. Satan, we come against you. 
We come against you in the name of yes. Jesus without any fear Amen. whatsoever because Amen. we know that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. We know that you're a liar. We know that you're defeated yes. and you're not going to destroy the souls of those boys and girls Amen. and husbands and wives tonight that you intended to destroy. They will be snatched back from your hands in Jesus' name. Yes. We release the Holy Spirit now to do that work. And Lord, we claim souls. We ask you tonight, Lord, for at least 2,000 souls. God, not because of numbers, but because of the need. Yes. Lord, in Jesus' name, Lord, we, we claim agree. that many. We agree. And we thank you for it. We stand on your promise, and we agree tonight. And if any two will agree on this earth as touching anything they shall ask, it'll yes. be done. Amen. And Lord, we praise you for the victory. Heal sick bodies. We claim the healing for their sickness, for the pain to leave. An infilling of the Holy Ghost. A new love and awareness of the supernatural power of God tonight. And Lord, we'll give you that praise and we'll give you the glory and the honor for every victory that's won in this week's revival. Beginning tonight. For it's in Jesus' name we claim this victory. Amen. 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 And all the church said, Amen. Praise God. Well, as we've said so often these past several days, our president and how I thank God for a man of Christian courage and integrity like our President Reagan, who's had the courage to sign into public law the fact that 1983 is the year of the Bible. Mark this in your Bibles if you haven't already because we're going to sort of use this as a theme scripture this whole year of 1983. Psalm 68 verse 11. And as I have said before, when we get to the end of 83, we're going to figure out a way to just keep the year that we're going to call it the century of the Bible or something. I don't know. We're just going to keep it going because this word is the answer to every human need. Psalm 68, 11, the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. If you're not a member of that company that's going to help publish this word in the year 1983, get on board tonight. Begin to read the word. Begin to share the word. Give Bibles to your neighbors. Read the word. Go visit someone in the hospital or in prison and read the word to them. Get the word out. Leave Bibles everywhere. Just buy inexpensive versions of the Bible and leave them in hotels and in restaurants and everywhere you go. You know, we keep getting cute little ideas. You know what a new one was? We have a postage meter machine at Channel 40 over there that just sends thousands of pieces of correspondence out a day. We're going to put right on the little machine that puts the postage on there, 1983, the year of the Bible. So that just thousands and thousands, every time the postman looks at that letter, he's going to see it's the year of the Bible. Many of you have ideas. Send them in to us. We want to hear your ideas. Of course, number one, read the Bible yourself. I'm beginning to read. Jan's reading. We're going to read the Bible through in 1980. That's the minimum, I think, that any child of God ought to start with. Read the word through this year of 1983. And then Build on that and do other things and share the word. Oh, my. All right. Are you ready to go? Turn the monitor around so that our partners can see. Oh, you've got a monitor over there. Maybe we can turn this one just a little bit. Going to take you back to just a couple of weeks ago in Washington, D.C. Now, we saw the presidential prayer breakfast, and, of course, that was where President Reagan actually signed into law, 1983, the year of the Bible. But then he made some other remarks at the NRB, National Religious Broadcaster Convention, that are absolutely incredible. In case you missed them, I want you to hear what he had to say. This little piece was put together by Matthew, my son. He did a great job in producing this little 11-minute spot that you're going to see right now. The President of the United States and Mrs. Reagan.
Perhaps at no other time in the history of America has this country had a president so dedicated to God and his principles. President Ronald Reagan believes 2 Chronicles 714. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. As a beginning in this healing process, a bill making 1983 the year of the Bible has been signed into Congress. And a distinguished committee made up of 22 Christian leaders from across America has been formed to promote the Bible and its application in American life. Committee chairman is Dr. Bill Bright of Campus Crusade for Christ. On the committee is founder and president of the Trinity Broadcasting Network, Paul Crouch, and Demas Shikarian, president and founder of the Full Gospel Businessmen's Association, and honorary chairman, President Ronald Reagan. Now, I would like to sign a proclamation which will make 1983 the year of the Bible. And I want to thank Senator Bill Armstrong and Representative Carlos Moorhead and all those inside and outside of Congress who assisted them and made this all possible. Thank you and God bless you. And I'm going down and sign the proclamation. Signed by President Ronald Reagan, February 3rd, 1983. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Senate and House of Representatives of the United States of America in Congress assembled that the President is authorized and requested to designate 1983 as a National Year of the Bible in recognition of both the formative influence the Bible has been in our nation and our national need to study and apply the teachings of the Holy Scriptures. President Reagan's deep devotion to God and his word is no secret. I'm accused of being simplistic at times with some of the problems that confront us. But I've often wondered, within the covers of that single book are all the answers to all the problems that face us today if we'd only look for them. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I hope Americans will read and study the Bible in 1983. It's my firm belief that the enduring values, as I say, presented in its pages have a great meaning for each of us and for our nation. The Bible can touch our hearts, order our minds, refresh our souls. Now, I realize it's fashionable in some circles to believe that no one in government should order or encourage others to read the Bible. Encourage, I shouldn't have said order. That we're, we're told that we'll violate the constitutional separation of church and state established by the Founding Fathers in the First Amendment. Well, it might interest those critics to know that none other than the father of our country, George Washington, kissed the Bible at his inauguration. And he also said words to the effect that there could be no real morality in a society without religion. John Adams called it the best book in the world. And Ben Franklin said, the longer I live, the more convincing proofs I see of this truth, that God governs in the affairs of men. Without his concurring aid, we shall succeed in this political building no better than the builders of Babel. We shall be divided by our little partial local interests. Our projects will be confounded and we ourselves shall become a reproach, a byword, down to future ages. So when I hear the First Amendment used as a reason to keep the traditional moral values away from policymaking, I'm shocked. The First Amendment was not written to protect people and their laws from religious values. It was, protect, it was written to protect those values from government tyranny. I've always believed that this blessed land was set apart in a special way, that some divine plan placed this great continent here between the two oceans to be found by people from every corner of the earth, people who had a special love for freedom, the courage to uproot themselves, leave their homeland and friends to come to a strange land. And when coming here, 
They created something new in all the history of mankind, a country where man is not beholden to government. Government is beholden to man. Now, I happen to believe that one way to promote, indeed, to preserve those traditional values we share is by permitting our children to begin their days the same way the members of the United States Congress do, with prayer. The public expression of our faith in God through prayer is fundamental as a part of our American heritage and a privilege which should not be excluded from our schools. No one must be forced or pressured to take part in any religious exercise. But neither should the freest country on earth ever have permitted God to be expelled from the classroom. When the Supreme Court ruled that school prayer was unconstitutional almost 21 years ago, I believe it ruled wrong. And when a lower court recently stopped Lubbock, Texas high school students from even holding voluntary prayer meetings on the campus before or after class, it ruled wrong too. Our only hope for tomorrow is in the faces of our children. And we know Jesus said, suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such is the kingdom of God. Well, last year, we tried to pass an amendment that would allow communities to determine for themselves whether voluntary prayer should be permitted in their public schools. And we failed. But I want you to know something. I'm determined to bring that amendment back again and again and again and again until... I know that each of you is contributing in your own way to rebuilding America, and I thank you. As broadcasters, you have unique opportunities, and all of us, as Protestants, Catholics, and Jews, have a special responsibility to remember our fellow believers who are being persecuted in other lands. We're all children of Abraham. We're children of the same God. You might be interested to know about a few of the changes that we're making at The Voice of America. Our transmissions of Christian and Jewish broadcasts are being expanded and improved. This year, for the first time in history, the Voice of America broadcast a religious service worldwide Christmas Eve at the National Presbyterian Church in Washington, D.C. Now, these broadcasts are not popular with governments of totalitarian powers. But make no mistake, we have a duty to broadcast. Alexander Hertz and the Russian writer warned to shrink from saying a word in defense of the oppressed is as bad as any crime. Well, I pledge to you that America will stand up, speak out, and defend the values we share. To those who would crush religious freedom, our message is plain. You may jail your believers, you may close their churches, confiscate their Bibles, and harass their rabbis and priests, but you will never destroy the love of God and freedom that burns in their hearts they will triumph over you. Uh, Malcolm, Malcolm Muggeridge, the brilliant English commentator, has written, the most important happening in the world today is the resurgence of Christianity in the Soviet Union, demonstrating that the whole effort sustained over 60 years to brainwash the Russian people into accepting materialism has been a fiasco. Think of it, the most awesome military machine in history. But it is no match for that one single man, hero, strong yet tender, prince of peace. His name alone, Jesus, can lift our hearts 
soothe our sorrows, heal our wounds, and drive away our fears. He gave us love and forgiveness, taught us truth, and left us hope. And the book of John is the promise that we all go by. It tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. With his, with his message and with your conviction and commitment, we can still move mountains. We can work, work to reach our dreams and to make America a shining city on a hill. And before I say goodbye, I wanted to leave with you these words from an old Netherlands folk song because they made me think of our meeting here today. We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. We all do extol thee, thou leader triumphant, and pray that thou still our defender wilt be. Let thy congregation escape tribulation. Thy name be ever praised. O oh Lord, make us free. To which I would only add a line from another song. America, America, God shed his grace on thee. Thank you again. 1983, the year of the Bible. And with our prayers, the year of... We find I feel like we ought to just pause right now and reach our hands.